I'm Emilia Niemelen, the creator of Innamorat the Dolls. I was recently asked if one could make wig caps out of paper mache. Well, paper medical fiberglass casting tape and layered caps usually end up too thick, hard and brittle. What I generally want from a hard cap wig is a strong but a thin cap with some elasticity. Beauty of the hard cap wigs is being able to create a natural hairline instead of the doll-like round one. Any brittle material will eventually crack near the ears and in places like the widow's peak, hence the need for material with some gear. The elasticity also allows the wig to be more easily shareable if you have dolls with the same head size but different shapes. Since strong odours trigger my asthma, I always look for materials and methods that are as close to odourless as possible. Hence my chosen method, hot glue. As an added bonus, the wicks made the, with this method are waterproof and can be washed and restyled. Which is great because of something I actually have to do with this wig after being kind of overly zealous with hair oil. <laughs> So, as long as you don't use too hot water, you can just wash it with shampoo and conditioner, it's just like your own hair. I think the easiest way to answer the question of how to make a wig cap is just to show you how to make one, or how I make one. So, first what you want to do is to protect your wig head with a cling wrap. Note that this might still damage the face up of your doll, so it's best to make the wig before the face up or use a dedicated wig head like I do here. Annoyingly, Japanese clear wrap doesn't actually stick to itself, so I just have to gather it up and use yarn to fit it tight around the ears. Few loops around the ears is a good idea anyway, as it will prevent the hairline from gaping there. I use either yarn that matches the doll's skin tone and the cap material, or colour that matches the hair fibre itself like I'm doing here. Next, I repeat the wrapping process with a netting fabric that matches the doll's skin tone. I use a fabric that has a two-way stretch, which helps me get a tight fit without any wrinkles. I try to gather all the wrinkles on the facial area to keep the scalp smooth. I tie kind of figure eights around the ears and bundled up fabric at the chin area. And when you get the scalp stretched smooth, just add a drop of glue to the end of the yarn to seal it in place. So time for gluing. Key here is to use as little glue as possible, so don't just squirt it. As you can see, I've stripped off the silicone heat cover from the nozzle of the glue gun. I add a droplet and use the side of the nozzle to spread it smoothly over the scalp to form the cap. The glue cools fast, so this is quite a quick and easy technique. It's also quite forgiving, as you can go over the same area several times. Finally, I just polish the whole thing to make sure it's even and that the cap is strong at my plant hairline area. Okay, let's draw the hairline. I use a pole point pen, but will cut inside the line so the markings won't end up in the final wig. I studied the photos to see where the inspiration model's natural hairline is located, as this is really important for likeness. When you've done a rough sketch, you can either cut the wig cap off and all continue directly making the wig. I generally go on as it keeps the cap stable while gluing, but we will get to that in the second part of this video. I have to apologize to have been so dreadfully bad about posting these videos. I film a lot of material over the past year, but the task of editing is always so daunting. I'm also a horrible completionist and want to make these all encompassing videos that take way too long to make. So I'm trying to take smaller bites and post more often. Let me know what you prefer in the comments below, long videos or series of shorter ones. Thanks for watching. See you next time.